Maximum performance packed into minimum price. This probably is the best way to describe the quite capable off-road oriented Kugu Kirin G2 Max. But is it good enough? Let's inspect! Whoa! Hey! <laughs> good to meet you! Michael is my name. And that's the scooter that we're trying out today. It's the Kugo Kirin G2 Max, which funny enough arrives just a few weeks after I've tested the G2 Pro. But we have discovered some things which are a little disturbing. And over here, it looks like Kugo Kirin are trying to max out absolutely everything in terms of components which can fit with a $900 budget. But it's pretty remarkable because we count on dual suspension front and rear. We have one kilowatt motor on the back and promised range of up to 80 kilometers. So there really is plenty to test within this episode. And we're gonna make a thorough inspection just like every single time in order to find out all the strengths, but also all the weaknesses. So let's go. Sounds like currently Kugo Kirin have a few good offerings with similar pricing and specifications. There are a whole lot of other electric scooters with dual suspension and one kilowatt or more motors, but what is common about all these more capable offerings is that they cost a lot more. From this that I've tested on the channel, Navi's S65 is close to $1200 and has a speed limit of 25 km per hour, Nibot Max doesn't have suspension and nears the price of the Kugo Kirin G2 Max, so the closest in terms of features, some Kabu Manti series and maybe some of the cheaper V-Set models. Let us unpack and set it up. The close to 35 kg box means that you better get a second pair of hands in order to help you with the setup, although by applying some smart tricks you should be fine on your own too. Like cutting the box loose from the bottom and then pulling it up, it's impressive how well wrapped this scooter is. Feels like someone from Kugo Kirin's package planning department has played a lot of time with LEGO. The first thing to take out is the user guide. Reading it is gonna save you a lot more time and hassle. The seat post frame, the handlebar, the charging adapter and the tools are also located at the upper side. You can put them somewhere near the scooter because they're gonna be needed. While figuring out how to tighten the handlebar, you can notice the folding mechanism. It's good, probably the best I've seen on a Kugo Kirin scooter yet. There are four screws you're gonna need to tighten around the handlebar and while you do it, you can notice the hook. Also for putting there a shopping bag and at the same time it's used to hold the scooter together when it's folded. Once you have the handlebar attached, the rest is easy. Get rid of the protective styrofoam, open the stand, inspect all the joints and the screws, whether they are well tightened and maybe you can install the seat, which I didn't do because it's gonna take away from the sporty off-road nature of the scooter. If you're planning to ride it on a flat gravel road, then fine, but going over serious bumps and having fun is not really compatible with just sitting there and watching. In terms of specs, the scooter is equipped with a 1000W brushless motor, has 20 amp 48V battery, promises up to 80km range and 55km per hour maximum speed, climbing capability of up to 30 degree hills, three different speed grades, front and rear suspension, 10 inch pneumatic off-road tires, it has a six grade lighting system, dual disc brake setup, very wide board and weight of around 31 kilos. In terms of specs, <laughs> that's music for my ears because Kuru Kirin, they got everything right, especially given the $900 budget at the moment. Uh, for instance, the one kilowatt motor is supposed to be good enough, although, I still believe that having two 500 watt motors in each of the wheels is gonna give you better performance, better acceleration. Uh, in terms of suspension, that's pretty awesome because very good responsiveness, extremely smooth riding and most importantly very quiet. So after close to 200 kilometers they are still not jingling when going over bumps. That's impressive for a Kugo Kirin scooter. As for the range, promised 80 kilometers, I guess the right thing to do is to test each and every component to find out how it performs in real life. I'm gonna explore the key elements and I'm gonna start with what most people ask about, namely about the range. With Kugo devices I've never managed to achieve the maximums and here it's no different. If you need to somehow get close to the 80 km threshold on a single charge, you have to ride at speed 2 with cruise control, you have to weigh no more than 70 kilos and to avoid inclines and bumps. 
There are very few areas in this world which can offer such ideal conditions. Mixed riding at gears 2 and 3 is gonna give me around 35 to 40 kilometers. But note that I always accelerate from steel point and rather ride aggressively. At speed mode 2 with slower acceleration and some battery-friendly habits, I can extract around 50 km range. The good news is that at mode 2 the maximum speed is 30 km per hour, so this is still better than what you may get from 9 bot Max, for instance. Range is good and so far among the best achievements for Kuku Kirin's product line. Unfortunately, the battery cells are not Samsung or LG made, so there might be some quality concerns, although Kuku Kirin promised they will last for at least 500 cycles, which equals to more than 15,000 km if you ride aggressively. The motor, on the other hand, has been a nice surprise. Being installed in the rear wheel, it accelerates fast, doesn't feel too heavy and has a good heat disposal system, so it's a good one even for very hot regions. At mode 3, climbing hills is a pleasure, and acceleration is notable even while you're riding on inclines. It's nowhere near the joy of doom motor beasts, but definitely a very capable single motor setup. Quiet and balanced. Also, notice how wide the deck is. It's rubberized, so it's not slippery. And for the first time, Kuku Kirin used this pedal area at the back, shorter as compared to their other models. Very convenient in my opinion, especially if you want to try tricks like riding on one tire. Speaking of tires, 10 inches, off-road texture, similar feeling to what you get out of the G3 model from last year. Since the blocks are quite big, getting a puncture caused by small needles or pieces of glass are very unlikely to happen. Combined with a very responsive suspension, it is, in my opinion, the Kugo Kirin model with the smoothest and quietest riding experience. I guess this forearm shock absorber this time is to think about this. Both of the wheels have a disc, therefore disc brakes, and although they're not hydraulic, they perform very well, can be fine-tuned and are very quiet at the same time. In terms of performance, they actually are close to the popular zoom brakes that many duo motor scooters are equipped with. When you press either of the brakes, it's immediately shown on the display and the rear LED starts to blink as well. In terms of lights, and this scooter has plenty of them, some illuminating the area in the front, some on the back, and there also are turn signals. In some countries you can register it as a motorbike and get a plate number, although looks like Kugo Kirin have planned no dedicated space for this on the rear mudguard. I didn't mention about the reliable folding mechanism, but here it is, quite straightforward, so you don't have to remember special tricks or pull hidden hinges to release the stem, just unscrew, press, fold. Although the scooter is rather heavy, with measured weight of around 31 kilos, in folded condition it is okay to carry and store. Going to the upper side, the stem length is adjustable, so you can tune the handles according to your own height. Know that I'm 188 centimeters, and the top position here is just about right, meaning that this scooter wouldn't feel that great if your height is 2 meters and above. If I may wrap up this component checkup with the handlebar, it's well designed, the brake levers are easy to access, on the left you control the lights, the turn signals and the beeps, on the right we have a button to power the scooter on, and the same one is used for switching between gears. There's a key lock mechanism to prevent others from easily stealing the scooter, and a display which I although underestimated at the beginning, is actually a very good one. Overall, I'm so pleased with everything that this scooter has to offer that there barely are any drawbacks to list. Still, if you want to make it perfect, you'd probably want a dual motor edition, higher waterproof rating, tubeless tires, hydraulic brakes and Bluetooth connection for a smartphone app, but if they really include such kind of improvements, the price will for sure exceed the 900 bucks that they ask at the moment. So this is why I think right now in the end of 2022 it's one of the really best deals for capable electric scooter with do suspension and very good motor performance. But if you know other deals, then be invited. In the comments below you can share whatever you have to. And in case of questions or other things you want to talk about, I'm really open to your ideas and we'll respond as soon as I can. Uh, if you want to support the channel and if you like this 
electric scooter, then there's a link for you with a coupon code. So besides getting a minor discount, if you use the link, you're going to support the channel by giving out a small commission out of your purchase at no additional cost to you. So that's been everything for today. I hope it was fun and useful. I really look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Bye.